What's up everybody, it's your boy Melvin here for another review, and today I'm reviewing my thoughts on the latest movie and the long-awaited sequel, Hocus Pocus 2, which came out back on Friday on September 30th, and oh boy, do I have a treat for you, but for those who haven't seen it, spoilers alert, don't watch this video if you haven't seen the movie, go watch the movie first, then come back here, you'll see why. But before we begin, did you subscribe? Did you hit the bell? If so, I hope you're not a virgin. If you if you light that candle, <whistles> well, you just released three crazy witches back from the grave after 29 years. Let's begin, shall we? But yeah, it's been 29 years since we've seen the Sanders and sisters played by Ben Mildred. Kathy and Jimmy and Sarah Jessica Parker. Oh yeah, here's a little fun fact. Turns out Sarah Jessica Parker's ancestor was accused of being a witch in Salem. Wow. That's a, that's one way to get the part. Hm. If you're related to a witch, get the part. <laughs> but yeah, we have but I'm gonna not go review that much because hey, spoils alert. You know what? Any spoiling, right? That's why I can go put the warning right in the front of the title that says, Spoilers, do not watch this video if you haven't seen the movie. But, you've been warned. So yeah. We get like a, a backstory between the sisters when they were kids and why they were banished. I think it's because of the Reverend named Reverend Trask tried to have a forced marriage with Winifred and another guy which... It's kind of funny that he called because he's not interested in her because she's ugly. Which the whole town agrees until she calls him out and says, hey, Well, you're not a prize yourself. And she first being with Billy Butcherson, which we get to see him. Which Billy's like, Why? Because we're soulmates. Says when? Says we kissed in the graveyard. Which, oh my god, I think it's a blasphemous thing to do. Kiss in the graveyard. <laughs> of course. The Reverend had enough and tried to, so he had Winifred banished. But before he banished her, he had he wants to remove his Winifred's sisters to take them away, so they won't get influenced by Winifred's behavior. Which, oh my, that's when things go haywire. The whole tree escaped and into the Forbidden Woods. Which, of course, soon after they they try to do a comedy circle, which is kind of funny. We see them the first time they did the comic circle back in 93. That's when they mentioned Mother. Which they mentioned that the father's dead, but who's the mother? Soon a mysterious bird appears, of course, and turns to be a witch herself, trying to suck the soul out of Sarah, but one of her stopped. That's when the witch, known as the Mother Witch, senses one of her's not afraid and explains that she's a witch. And explains the why the Forbidden Woods is so special, which I'm not gonna tell you because you haven't seen the movie for yourself. So yeah, but before that, she gives her the book as a 16th birthday present. There was a particular spell that one of her wanted to do first, called the Magica Mystica, which is a powerful spell, which, according to the Mother Witch. Is frowned upon by other witches, which she tells them not to use. Even the book agrees. Soon, she kind of says she, they're lucky because they have each other since she's the last one left because the rest were persecuted and killed. Soon, the, the she disappears. The three Santa sisters began their revenge by trying to burn burning the Reverend's home. <laughs> well, we expect. And we cut to the present day. We meet one of our new attack protagonists, Becky and Izzy. Two, I say, witches in training since they usually have a daily ritual every October, every 31st, which is Izzy's birthday. Of course, we meet Cassie, who's the third, but soon she starts to weigh away and join the popular students since. Her dad is act. She's actually a direct descendant of the Reverend Trask, and her dad's the mayor of Salem. Then we meet Gilbert, who is the 
the owner of the men's shop, which is now the former home of the Sanderson sisters, which, like I said before, because the last time we seen the Sanderson sisters' house, it was in the middle of the woods, it used to be a museum, now it's a magic shop, in a build-up parts of the t in Salem, so, well, it's been 29 years, so of course it'll be development since 93. What do you think? You'd be stuck in the woods all day? <laughs> After that, that's when Gilbert explains the story of the Sanders' sisters, including we get some awesome flashbacks from the first film, when he mentions the death of Emily Banks, we get to see the scene where the sisters suck Emily's life force, including the night when Winfrey casts the curse, their execution, but, this has deeper ties to Gilbert, because you wouldn't see. That's when he has the book, which at first we felt it was a fake one, but that's when... Okay, I'm not going to explain it. Then we got so back in Izzy, or in the store. That's when Gilbert gets, gets Izzy a candle for her birthday for free. Strange, right? Of course... They do their tradition in the middle of the woods, which is in outside where the old village is. Literally, the village is still standing. Wow. <laughs> but yeah, they do their they do their you know annual tradition, saying the magic until when they light the candle. At first, that was like one of those gag candles. You know the when you light on your birthday cake, they're like sparks. They forget, they put it out because they think it's going to cause a forest fire, but nope. Black flame. That's when... Oops. And guess who's back? The witches, like... And Winifred, Fred, with all their greatness, shows the words, Lock up your children, Salem! We're back! And it started with a musical number. The song, The Witches Are Back, which is it's kind of catchy. It's not like the original, when Max lit the candle, the floor starts shaking. His sister, with her commentary, saying, A virgin lit the candle. That's when the witches appear, with lightning flash. That's it. This was a musical number, it's kind of catchy. Soon, is he a Becky, Becca, realize what just happened. Virgin, black flame candle, full moon. Halloween, oh fuck. They try to run and they wonder who they're singing to, and Sarah just popped up and Nora saying, You! Damn! Then they get caught by Sarah, and then came Win Winnie and Mary. That's why they try to make up a story and saying that they are actually 40 year old women in teenage forms and saying, We suck up children all the time, which they start to get pretty calling them their idol, which we see Mary, Sarah, and Winifred again. Embarrassed since they have, of course, celebrities. Soon, a little bit of shenanigan happens where they tell him to get some potions, which is at a Walgreens. <laughs> which is pretty funny. Soon, they find out. Hell breaks loose, but then soon, they found some salt, which protected them. Of course, they escape, but of course, the archery. And he tries to save the salt. Winifred grabs some last broom. And here's the funny thing. This reflects from the first film when when they try to get some some transportation. They forgot the broom, so yeah. In the first film, Winifred gets the broom, Sarah gets the mop, Mary gets the vacuum cleaner, and what did he what did this happen this time? Winifred gets the broom. Sarah gets some type of mop, I think the one of these newer mops, and Mary one of these robot cleaners, you know the Roomba ones? Just two. And she's trying to balance it, and she says, Calabanga! <laughs> Which, she said that the, own, the the worker says they have a mind of their own, so be careful. And they start to fight, she tells them, hey, keep it down. Yeah. So Mary's the one with a high-tech broom, well, Roomba. She's surfing in the sky. <laughs> Soon after, they back and easy, confronted Gilbert, which turns out, well, the book's alive because Mar when he called for the book, the book woke up trying to escape, but he he strapped him. That is when when they know when Izzy, I think it was Izzy or Becca who knows the book's alive. That's when Gilbert saying, "Wait, he woke up." That's when they knew Gilbert knows something. 
And it turns out Gil Gilbert was the one who tricked them, which that was a dick move because he wants to meet them, which those other two confront them, say they're dangerous, hey, hey, they're famous, and then boom, they appeared. Of course, that's when Gilbert's meet them, which of course Woodford gets the book. That's when Mary finds the other two. Woodford Turns out there's a dungeon in their house, which I did not know that, but hey, we're gonna keep the children. Of course, they throw in the dungeon. That's when Gilbert try explains that he was a big fan since the night, which of course he's talking about the night back in ninety three when they when they were a lot when they were brought back. And we get flashback from Gilbert as a kid. What he mentions that he he was it was a bad Halloween for him. His candy from, was stolen by two boys, which I'm betting 50 bucks it's the two bullies that stole Max's shoes and they end up being the cage, cage birds in the San Francisco sisters house. Which, if you recall the scene from when they were like TP and they're eating candy, like one of them was eating candy? I believe that's the candy, that's Gilbert's candy they stole from. So yeah. Even Gilbert witnessed their, Gilbert witnessed them fly in the sky, which like I said, Winifred with the broom, Sarah with the mop, Mary with the vacuum. And also, when it's the scene where they when they, they died, when sun rose at the cemetery, which, remember, this is a, okay, the reason, okay, the cemetery is more different than the original from the first film, so they, you, they make it more sense, they only do close-ups of the witches when they, when they disintegrated, including the... The statue of Winifred, which is there when she touched holy ground. Hollow ground. Which we get to see. They use re reuse old clips from the first film. Where Gilbert witnessed their death. And also it turns out Gilbert was the one who made the black flame candle. With the help from the book. Which Winifred compliments on the book for having a plan. <clears throat> That's when Mary finds a photo of the mayor. Which she tells Winifred. A weenie. What? It's the Reverend. That's why they freaked out because remember, when they see the the mayor's face, they figure like that's the Reverend. Turns out, remember, he's a descendant of the Reverend that banished jumps, trying to have them split up. Of course, Mary, of course, Wonderfred confronts Gilbert and saying, "Who's this?" Uh, that's the mayor. That's when she gets mad. Even Mary want, wants the, the whole family to be dead. But instead, they burned the house. But the problem is that they were kids. Yeah. Soon, they decided not to create a potion for children, but revenge. And what better way to do it? The damn the spell that the mother witch forbid them to use. But when Winifred said, that's been expired for 300 years. Okay. Soon, Gilbert ends up getting his goose cooked because, hey, guess what happened? He got tricked by bringing the Sanderson Hourglass, which it turns out he sold his soul to them as a contract to get the ingredients or he dies. So, yeah. I'm not going to explain the whole thing. A lot of shenanigans happen. Of course, the first place he goes, the graveyard, where he tried to dig up Billy. Which turns out, Billy's been awake for 29 years. Remember, he's never been put to rest after the last time they were there. So technically, his coffin was still above ground. Because when he hit the ground, dunk, it's not six feet. And Billy just woke up, popped out of the ground, and say, Do you mind? And give just a scream and say, Zombie! Oh my god, that's the most sissy run ever. Which, of course, when Gilbert tries to explain that he's Winifred's lover, that's when Billy explains that he's not Winifred's lover, we only had one kiss, that's it. Which, by that reputation, ruined his name for a long time. But soon, Gilbert needs the head, so he made up a story that he wants to kill Winifred when he tells them they're back. So Billy agrees. Meanwhile, we're still getting a lot of shenanigans because with the ingredients and everything. 
Oh, good. Another musical number. This time in a costume contest. Who's the better Santa sister? <laughs> of course. But yeah. I'm going to skip the whole thing because I don't want to spoil it that much. So, okay. We're going to skip to all the way to the climax. Soon, get to get all the ingredients. Billy's mad. You'll guess why when you see the movie. And also, the sisters kidnapped Cassie when they found out she's also a descendant of the Reverend. So, they don't need the mayor. This took her. And guess what they need? The blood of the enemy. So, what if it just scratched her in the neck... Dips the blood with the resin grain ones, which is butter, raspberry, a petrified spider, which it turns out to be a, a plushie, and Billy's head. Because since he's the lover, yeah. At first, when they see Billy, when Sarah's like, hi, Billy, he smiles. When he sees Winterfred, he's not. He tells him to shut up, but Winterfred just zit, seals his mouth again. <laughs> oh, my God. But, yeah. It's pretty funny. Soon, it turns out, Izzy is a witch because she finally gets her powers, what she didn't know. Of course, the first time we're battling them, that's when Sarah Maz turns out Sarah has powers too, and then Mary, which they didn't know. Which is pretty cool. Soon, <clears throat> it turns out, even the bug doesn't want to... Get the spell, so he goes with Izzy, which <laughs> pisses off Winterfred right there. But as I said, forget the buck, I'll know the spell. That's when all three are gathered. That's when the book shows them the spell, which has a warning. It turns out it needs the sacrifice of the ones you love. And guess what Winterfred loves more? Her sisters. But too late, she did the spell, and somehow, they remain alive. That's when Mary and Sarah know something. They start to vanish, turn to dust. And that's when Winifred knows it, and turns out, they're disappearing. They're because the spell makes one powerful, but you have to lose the ones you love, as in her sisters. Which breaks her heart as they vanish. She begs them to bring them back, which they did a spell, but it not brings them back. It sends her back with them, as in dead. Soon, Winifred owns her fate, thanks them, and poof, she's dust. And not just them, Billy, finally, so he does the same thing. Finally, he can rest in peace, and also Gilbert. After surviving a fling when one of her sends him flying, promised to tell the real story of Billy, which he he thanks for that. And he vanishes and finally rests in peace. And soon the tree leave and the tree started to walk this do the same walk as the Santa sisters do. Literally, you know the the way they walk in the first film? The we're walking? That. <laughs> But yeah, and that was Hocus Pocus 2, and there's an end credit because it involves a cat, which, a black Gilbert's cat, and the sisters mistakenly thought that was Zachary Binks, and what if it almost killed poor, the poor cat, <laughs> while Gil was trying to find the hourglass. <laughs> oh boy. The cat shows up, and guess what's right next to the cat standing on? A box that says Black Flame Candle number two. Which means given it they made not but not one but two flame candles, black flame candles. Which, if you recall from what they say, is confirmed there will be a third film, so there's your black another black flame candle. Here we go again. <laughs> and that was Hocus Pocus 2, people. And to me, it's an awesome film because, come on, I've seen it like five times. It's still good. I've been checking out the the, the critics, what they say. Here, Okay, here's my advice to you guys. Don't listen to Chris. More than listen to us from the, you know, the channel who like to watch these movies and that. We give a better positive thought on that. 
these other critics from the main media, they're, just try, they're trying to trash it like they did with the with the first film back in 93. So yeah, ignore those guys. Listen to us because we make a positive view on the film. But yeah, I think that'll be it for today. And yeah, hey, how October 8 is still young, so I'll be continuing with these reviews. But until then, I'll see you next time, people. And if you're new to the channel, remember to subscribe, hit the bell, like this video if you like the movie, and if you remember the first one, that's a double like too. And comment down below on what, what other movies should I do my review for October, because hey, it's still young. Let's have some fun. But until then, see ya. But first, burn.